No, 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 Let me start by saying that the party is an alternative government. And we are prepared to be responsible in our reaction to national issues. And that brings me to the concern our people have about what will follow the 19th of June. from this tripartite committee. We know exactly why the tripartite came into being. We are aware of it. But some people are downplaying the role this tripartite would play in taking corrective measures. We've been told by our opponents that they will never hand over power to us. This is undemocratic. If somebody had said that in our own party, we will immediately correct it. But that is their thinking. We will never hand over. So even if we were to win an election, they will definitely repeat. This calls for nothing other than chaos. And to say bullet for bullet, we, you have read our own reaction, which is not pugnacious as far as we are concerned. We've given him the alternative to what he had said, that the country is going through the truth of a savage economic situation created by them. Instead of making, taking corrective measures, you are challenging people to come with bullet and you will answer with bullet most unfortunate statement but we are going to disregard such statements and assure our people that the tripartite is a collective agreement to salvage this country from chaos and we were part of it the APC and the SFPP-led government and our international partners. You cannot underrate short, very, very important agreement intended to bring peace to this country. We won the 1967 election, APC, the first in Africa south of the Sahara. What happened? The military intervened and deprived us of power. Thirteen months later, we came to power by another military coup. We don't want that to happen here. The first commission of inquiry said the APC had won the election. This committee might say that APC has won. What if they say so? What will they do? Let us understand the position we are in. Our people are worried, scared, that after the 19th there is going to be chaos. We can assure our people that there will be no chaos. Our people say, one hand bangles, no, they cause noise. It takes two to tango. We are not going to follow them. They've never won the majority in any election in this country. That is why they brought in the PR system. In 2018, everybody knew what happened. We had 68 seats and they had 49 seats. If they had agreed to, for us to vote, what did they do? They brutalized our people, kicked them out of parliament, and they voted. Illegally, is turning Abbas Bundu as speaker. And they're removing 10 of our members from parliament. This is what they had done with the PR system. It's a calculation they did. Okay, let's look at Purloko. Let's remove three seats also. Let's look at Karina. No, we will get one seat, they will get the four seats. This is what they did all over the country. That is the danger of the PR system. The PR system is good in the hands of people who are democratic. In the hands of people who are democratic. 
all the undemocratic processes in the history of this country was started by the SLPP. In 1971, they wanted a one-party system of government. We went to an election, at the end of which election, the people did not trust them, but they trusted the APC, and the APC created that situation. We became a republic and a one-party state because that was the mood in the whole of West Africa. Either there was a military regime, which is a one-party regime, or one-party civilian dictatorships, or those who pretended to be democratic with a few inoperative parties in their countries. But what we are saying now is that the mood had changed for democracy since the 90s. And we are going to ensure that we follow due process in whatever we are doing. Deputy Leader of our Parliament has just said it. Because they went through due process, we accept it. The Speaker and the Deputy Speaker. Why are they not prepared after our preamble has stated that as far as we are concerned, we do not trust Mr. Cornell staying in power together with his commissioners while this investigation is ongoing. While this investigation is ongoing, they insisted he should be there. Cornell has no business being there. Then they said we should go as far back as 2007, as far back as 2012, 2018. These three elections were concluded at the Supreme Court. So as far as we are concerned, they are done deals. But what do they want? As far as they are concerned, they've now called Mufali and others to testify before this committee. The ABMs, elections management bodies, EMBs, we have problems with almost all of them, starting with ECSL, PPRC, NCRA, Statistics Sierra Leone, the police and ONS, and the military. We have problems with all of them. But then, as far as they are concerned, these are the institutions. But we believe that these are the institutions that have been compromised. They have been bought over by the government. So whatever happens, they cannot stand the test of processing a democratic dispensation. The tripartite will come out with their reports. People are concerned as to how these reports will be delivered. The process that is ongoing is going to be transparent. And interestingly, the man who conducted the 2018 election, Mfa, has said it. He said there is no secret in the election. The only thing that is secret is the ballot box. What these people are saying, there are classified documents they don't want to give the committee at all. What is classified? We want to know the number of people you have employed. You say it's classified. And the regional spread. You say it's classified. What is classified in that? Let me assure you that at the end of the day, the people of Sierra Leone will appreciate the deliberations that are ongoing now with the tripartite. So let us don't get panicky at all. We have received a lot of questions relating to our desire to open up, to open up and get our people who had left our party to come back. The, the, the National Secretary General has made it very clear. So as far as we are concerned, the door is open for readmission. The door is open for readmission. It 
which is open for everybody who was affected by either expulsion or voluntary uh, movement from the party, you are welcome to come back. Then we want to talk about hate speeches. It is one of the provisions in the eight-point resolution where we are expected, the APC and the SLPP, to come up with a definitive statement condemning hate speeches all over the country. We have sent the document to them. It has yet to be approved by them because we talked about indiscriminate detention and arrest of people. They say they don't want it in. But this is what is happening. You invite some important APC man to the CID, he spends three or four days, and then you release him. This is intimidation, so that nobody talks again about what they want to do. We are not prepared to set this country aflame at all. The APC is prepared to follow due process. We didn't go to war when we were deprived of the leadership of this country in 2023 at all. What we did, well, we stayed out. And when we stayed out, it became very important for us to meet with the SLPP. Why do we need third parties to come and, in, uh, and mediate if we really follow the instrument, the, the, the sacred instrument called the Constitution of Sierra Leone? But when you want to manipulate your way into power, you disregard these documents. And somebody asked a question, why don't you follow the example of uh, Senegal? Well, somebody answered the question. He said they had a judiciary that was prepared to say the truth. But if you don't have it here, you go out and demonstrate, you, got, you get killed, nothing will happen. Because those institutions are under the thumb of Madabio. This is the problem. This is the problem. That is the difference between us and Senegal. But people will say, oh, Senegal has done it. What happened in places like Tanzania, Malawi, etc., is as a result of institutions being the center of power and not individuals, like Obama said. Let us get strong institutions rather than strong men. And that is what we are going to put an end, strong men. We want people who are controlled by the rule of law. And it is the rule of law that will save this country from the chaos that these people want to plunge us in. On that note, today is a meeting, a press conference by the parliamentary group. It is not the national party that is calling this trend. That is why we want to give the opportunity to the leader, the leader of the parliamentary group to deliver his message to you. We'll come back again if there are questions that need to be answered. On that note, let me welcome you and thank you for your attention. That is a powerful statement by the Deputy National Leader, Honorable Elijah, Dr. Usman Fode Yansane. Thank you very much, Deputy National Chairman Al Haji Usman Fode Yansane. I hope I'm on point.